to Krefna with his grandson and granddaughter. He points out, see the grasshopper? In some cultures, a grasshopper. Where do you think they got the name? And grandkids are, why, what's with the accent, Grandpa? Well, I'm trying to go into character, right? You know, you, you, you want, want to start a story or, or create some kind of feeling, an ambiance, uh, an environment, and saying the tone for that environment makes all the difference in the world. Okay? So, anyway, see a movie, Red 2, and a reference to a woman's ability and her effect on men. And they were like, oh, that's two things, not one. And, and the guy turns to him and says, no grasshopper, one of the same. I could be wrong on that part, but he referenced grand, grasshopper. So, um, so instead of making this a story about Dukrafna trying to teach his grandkids, because that's what a book is for, turning facts that are really boring and, and, and all these things, and it turns them into a story, which is what I want to write. A story for kids where parents, grandparents, or pretty much anyone can create a relationship with another person that they value. Because I like you, or something to that effect and it can also be applied to creating romance whether you're in a romantic relationship or you want to start one because that's normal and everybody is normal this just so back to the grasshopper if De Krafnas. So if this is called a grasshopper, what do you call many grasshoppers? I don't know, Grandpa. Well, me neither. But apparently, there's something that looks just like a grasshopper or very close to a grasshopper. And when you put a group of them in together, you could call them a swarm, but the name, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, seems like I'm always wrong, but as far as I know, they are called a locust. And what are locusts famous for? I don't know, Grandpa. You're the one who watches all these stories and movies, you tell us! And granddaughter chips in. She goes and says, but see, that's why I need uh, uh, other people to play and act these parts, even if not on video, but as voices who enjoy creating a story, ad-libbing, so it's not just me making somebody speak these words, because they get to put into their, the story, who they are. And that's really important, because when you give people freedom to just be who they are, somehow, and that's the power of editing, somehow it just gets better.
because I can't think of everything and people just naturally being who they are ad lib and and just make things better and sometimes it goes horribly wrong but with that said what what, what are locusts for known for well they're nice as grasshoppers and you have cultures and societies built upon a grasshopper is a student a white belt in martial arts who is and if it's not in martial arts it's in a trade an apprenticeship uh something where they are just starting in another society where there were landlords who didn't own the land it was given to them so they are entitled because this was given to them and they went around recruiting children from poor families and had them come live on the farm and learn agriculture for a room and board you know I will take care of your kids and they will learn a trade something very important and valuable agriculture and they will be taken care of fed housed clothed you name it they will work their way through life because I'll have given them a trade and what did feudal lords and and all these are students why were they all called grasshoppers and why were the children taken from families of poverty you're right you're right you, you don't even need this story because you know the difference between somebody who owns a piece of land or property an animal or a romantic couple who are in a relationship and whether or not they have kids <laughs> plants kids or not their property is each other right their property is their children and difference between the people with property say land but this can be applied to people pets and everything and people with property and who know how to access resources which in this case a feudal lord would have a network that supplies him what he needs so he can he can take care of this land as it makes money for the lord the the person who actually owns the land right so what's the difference between a family thriving with property and one that is not that's right access to knowledge and resources because you could be really smart but if you do not have the ability to do the things that that transfer on oh, I'm living in the shack got this land given to me but because I know how to take the resources of land I know how to make adobe these are clay bricks I know how to make concrete and all these other materials just from the land doesn't cost nothing but it's labor intensive hence I'm going to take your kids because your poverty and even though you own the land that you live on you don't know how to build a mansion not only will it cost you a fortune for all the materials and that's just the building materials but for whatever reason you can't get along with people you have 
quarrels and squabbles and, and domestic problems. It's like you're at war with, with not just your spouse, but your kids and your friends and family and neighbors too. You're your own worst enemy. And I will, I will stay away from you, stay away from your war of the worlds, and I will offer opportunity to your kids in poverty, because you are a dumb fuck and you don't know how to just get along and be a diplomat, be able to negotiate, barter, whatever it is to compromise or even one better when there's a problem I don't do what you do I don't compromise are you fucking kidding me I change the dynamics and I create opportunity well look we, we can't get along on these two fronts and we are not building the Western Front or the Eastern Front, or any front at all. We are not in the laundry business. We are not creating fronts. What we are doing is, since we're in this together, we are going to acknowledge that we can't get along on these two topics, or whatever it might be, whatever the, the problem is, we have to approach the problem from a different angle. So, from a different angle, oh, hey, look at that. See that? If we do this and this and this and this, this will naturally fall into place. That is the magic of this world. Being able to love enough where you can say, oh, this ain't working. So if this is the problem, if we focus on these other things, just like a baby crying, changing its focus from whatever's making the baby cry, oh, baby got an angry cry. Oh, hey, you know what? Give that baby something else to focus on. Look, you little brat. I get it. That's why we create the terrible twos. Because we understand no matter the age, everybody, this is part of the human dynamic, this is part of the special thing about us humans, we ha have very specific wants and needs, but if we don't know how to get them, we will, we will throw a tantrum and, and we will force you to listen to us or something. So just like the locust and the grasshopper, grasshoppers are just fine one on one. We're teaching the kids who we name grasshoppers. And all through society, if all the, the people with childlike mentality, terrible twos, tantrums, just apathetic and, and really, I am not going to learn that because I don't have to. Well, great, great, great. Your life, you don't want to learn something. You can be a spaz and we'll call you Taz, and you can go around blowing up and being the focus of, of the problem. Or you can ex understand that there's a better way to go about getting your wants and needs met. And, of course, all through history, we have, for whatever reason, people who change the dynamics creating rebels. Here, we're going to overthrow the government. 
Here, we're going to overthrow religion. Here, we're going to overthrow business. Here, we're going, we're going to overthrow parents. We're going to overthrow any institution of authority. Oh. Well, great. Well, that, 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 that's a beautiful thing. That's wonderful. And what are you going to replace that with? I'm going to be a child king. I'm going to rule everything. I'm going to make heaven on earth. Well, that's, that's wonderful. What are you going to do that with? I'm a star child and I can do anything. Fantastic! You are graduating from Grasshopper into Locust. You will fucking feast and, and, and devour everything and you will become a fucking legend. You will become the best, the king of all kings. You will become the reason everybody else is starving because you want everything and, and we understand it. We get it. There are people who go around talking about conspiracies and, and creating this impression that creates a need for rebellion. We get it. We've seen it all through history. We see it in movies. We see all these things. We, we get it. We get it. You are outraged. You are oppressed. You are... You are at the bottom. Look, you're at the bottom. You, you know what? You will never rise because you are not the cream. You don't look like cream. All I see coming from you is, and if I listen, all I hear is terrible two tantrum and all those angry screams. <laughs> What do you mean this ain't entertaining? What do you mean freedom of speech? I'm just digging my hole ever so deep. What do you mean you don't know what I mean? We mean I'm making all this stuff up and my source of knowledge is all fucked up. I didn't invent the feudal system, but you look, you see in every culture, every. But even today, you look back and you go, why did the slaves stay on the farm? Where else did they have to go? Well, what does slavery look like today? Look, employers, if you don't give me what I want, I will, I will close down my business and I will go where they appreciate slave labor, I mean, working for less wages, well, I sell to you at extremely high prices, so I'm fucking them, and I'm fucking you. And that's what a fist does! <laughs> so, 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 making a story that shows cause and effect for kids to be able to enjoy and working with the right people who see how humor, Chris Rock and Will Smith, right? Why would I, I'm going to take that, I'm going to work on it all, on, on my own or with people I like and who like me, and I'm going to make something funny about it because this is the world we live in. Right? Well, they're good and bad and everything. That's right. So if they're good and bad and everything, and you want to teach about, oh, if slavery was all through history and forced people to stay on a farm or in a factory or in an office job or, or in prison or in the jail system. 
So we're trying to teach our kids and our grandkids and our great grandkids how to not be a part of that system. Because if you're going to build heaven on earth, you're not going to build it in the prison system or in the legal system or in any part of the penal system. That's why we call it a penal system because it fucks everybody. Meanwhile, it provides a way of economic growth to those involved. I got a family. I, I don't want people fucking who are child kings who fucking need to own everything and take from people who don't, who are barely getting by, can't fucking, don't have the access or the ability to negotiate or, or even network, so they prey upon those people. And, and they create opposition or oppression in the view that, oh, you have to be a prostitute, you, man or woman, boy or girl, you have to work in this, this trade because that's all you're good for. Because I'm taking care of you and just like Oliver Twist, it's me and my gang of goons who are taking care of you. And if you want that kind of world and that kind of life, look, all through history, there are people who have lived in that. And there are people who have learned the only way to get to the next level, you got to backstab, you're in constant competition of dog eat dog, and that's the world they live in. And if you want to live in a different world, well then, office politics is true too. And it's the exact same, only it's different devils, right? Even Rock will tell you, as you graduate, you will, the devils become worse and worse. And you have to be able to teach your kids how to identify what somebody is trying to do. Oh, kid at school talked to me today. Why are you telling me, son? Why are you telling me, daughter? Because I think they like me, but it could go horribly wrong because I see other people bouncing around relation to relationship and I don't want that. And, or maybe I do because I'm an adventurer just like you. That's right, child. And whether it's a mom or a dad speaking to a son or a daughter, that's why we're single, because we could not get what we needed from our spouse. Because everybody's living in a dog-eat-dog -dog world under the impression that money is the thing that is going to keep a family together. And you look and you go, oh, look, the employer threatening to leave town did leave town after years of threats because union just wanted too much. So you take something good and all of a sudden it becomes something bad. And in the process of these years before the, the owner closes the, the business, whether it's factory or any business, it, it could be a law firm. It could be anything. So you have people getting sick and getting injured, losing body parts for monetary reasons, because if I don't earn this money, my wife is going to take the kids. Or the wife having a prostitute, because if she doesn't earn the money, the family going to fall apart and they will live on Skid Row because she ended up being with a guy who's dumb as fuck and he's a child king who can't man up. Did I say that right? Have I 
pissed off the entire world yet? <laughs> yes, I got that from Eminem on that song that Dr. Dre helped create. See, when you're in partnership with people, magic happens. The very worst of things can happen, but the very best of things can happen. And we're all wanting the best. And again, the difference is, is knowing how to create the best. Because everybody can be a demolitions expert. We all grow up without knowledge and without the knowledge we are not able to build so little kids get frustrated and they destroy everything that hey did you see that glass break hey did you see look oh it was so awesome watching that brick explode when the sledgehammer hit it <clears throat> and so when we learn about pyrotechnics and, oh look, little kid with matches likes watching the fire. And, and we don't tell the kid, well, we, we gotta do it in a fireplace somewhere safe. This kid, they're starting a fire inside the house on a piece of wood thinking that fire goes up. But this little kid, had a ramp to jump his bicycle and using the wood as a platform not taught that the fire will inf and, and if that kid had left it would have burned his where he lived down where his whole family would have went homeless and only after did the, the little kid take that ramp made of wood with the fire set on top of it outside right so what am i trying to say i guess i watch a lot of movies and i get a lot of experience by watching other people and through the ideas of, of comic books, recognizing the good and the bad, where you find, oh, we're teaching and creating a world of good and evil when these people are forced to support their family and the only employer is this person who shows them you can have everything you want if you sell my product, right? Because this ain't a world of good and bad. This is a world where money rules. And if you build a world where money rules and business dominates any, any environment, you'll see the effects of that business in that environment. Look, and you can apply this to every trade. Look, all they do is bake. All they do is, is produce oil or manufacture, or, and, and all of a sudden the tar sands were just a thing of the past because now it looks like uh, uh, the moon because we're using up all these resources and we're creating a view that we should not use oil. No, we, sh we should use oil, but we should create these industries on small scale levels. Because when you try to supply the whole world, all, everything from, from what you're creating is going to eat up like locusts all that environment and farmers know you have to replenish that soil and, and this is why we a long time ago North America had plans 
who were conglomerates of business where they realized if you want a healthy land, healthy families, and, and, and specific things that are really good for everyone, from families to, to even business practices, even government, you cannot create a world of land ownership. You can create territories and, and peace treaties where clans and, and tribes work together, right? But to do that, unless you have one person go around by the whole island um, and say, okay, no more land ownership, how long is it going to take for one person or two people or three people or a group or a business to buy everything, all the property, so they can create their own set of laws and rules. See, if you build that world, there are going to be people who are going to do everything in their power to stop that. Right? So, and it's really easy to kill just one person who wants to do that. Right? Because if we have a world based on money and you take away that world where money is in power, what have they got left? That's right. Now they have to get by on their character. Not even that. They just have to get along with, with whoever they want. And to build that world... What would happen in that scenario? That's right. Have power over somebody. You have to have something that places you in power over that person. Just like knowledge, right? Oh, if, if this family, this poor family, wants a better life for their kids, they have to go work with this landlord who was given this property or who bought this property because part of a network. So if you want a world built on networks, so no matter how you build your world, whatever you prioritize is, is really going to be the outcome of what that world looks like. So if you're all about creating a world of death and destruction and disease and poverty, where are going to come from the ashes? Activists. Yeah. What if you create a world of limited access to resources? What are going to come from the ashes of that? People who've, who who are survivors, who do everything in their power, whether they're, they're created with charm or good looks, charisma, or, or maybe strength, or, or the ability to, to recognize the people and be able to give those people what they want. Now, all of a sudden, I don't have to have power over someone because they like me. And they are willing, because of my views and my ability to meet their needs, because the wife, the husband, ain't getting what they want at home. The kids can't get what they need from their parents, but these people aren't related, and they are more than happy to turn little Oliver Twist into their best friends, right? So in all cases, no matter what world you build, you're going to have to do it with the people that want to build that world with you. And when you build it on story to show 
hey, you know what? A world full of all these different people, and it's not about good and evil. It's, it's not even about money or religion or politics or business or anything. It, it's about one person being able to survive and to give that child, when, when that child comes into this world, we do everything not to have that child view themselves as breeding stock or as workhorses or anything else. We want that child to be a well-rounded human being who can just get along and solve problems along the way of life. So they have as few regrets as possible because we live in a world where let, let, let's create a fictional force, right? We, we live in a world where we are going to amass as many enemies into that child's life as possible. And the only way to create enemies against that child is to keep that child stupid and to, to give that child the view that they are entitled or because when you're entitled, you, you get everything you want. This is a world of manifestation, and if you can envision it, you can be it. So let, let's say we create a world of manifestation. What are we doing? That's right, we're creating a world of actors. That's right. Oh, I'm here because you want me here. So, what do you want to do? Now, there are some people who live in that world. There are some people who would choose to live in that world. Well, if we build, again, we build it on any industry, the community or the environment is going to reflect the world that is built upon that business. So if you build a world on family and family values and loyalty and everybody needs to survive, what are you doing? You're creating the grounds for war. <laughs> I know that's not true, but it is true. You look at patriotism and the need to fight for your rights, to fight for love, to fight for your family, or anything else of value, right? So you need to be able to understand the world you live in, and the world you want to build, and the people who want to build a world where they can live and they can, they can live a good life. And you want to live a good life. So it's finding, finding the people who want what you want, want to create the story that you want. And whether you actually write this story or you live it, 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 it can be one of the same. I mean, really, because if you write a story upon the grasshopper, and as I said, we're all students, and you look at the cultures and, and how any business can dominate and, and show, oh, look, we live in a world without technology now. Who wants that? I like technology. I'm not at war with the world. So, good luck. <laughs>